Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Behind the Magic. I'm Dylan. I'm Eric, what's up y'all? And today we've got a very special guest. Eric, can you please introduce our guest today? Our favorite and all-time greatest, Gabriella Lester. Hi, favorite of today maybe, thank you. <laughs> yes, of course. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. <coughs> Sorry. Um, And we're going to start off by just talking about you as a magician, how did you get into magic? What inspired you? Who magician inspired you? Yeah, give us the backstory. Yeah, um, I really loved it as a little kid, which I feel like most people did. But I had a lot of encounters that kind of drew me back to it. Like I had a, a teacher in middle school who was a magician that studied with McBride. And he had magicians come to the school all the time, one of which was Sean Farquhar, who would probably be the magician that got me. Oh, nice. Yeah. And how, how long ago did you start Magic? How long has it been now? Uh, I started probably pursuing it seriously when I was about 10. So I'm oh, wow. going on nine years now. Nice. Yeah. Nine, nine years. Were you going to say something before, Eric? Yeah, yeah. sorry, keep going. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I know from your, from your Can I Tell It Fool Us that you uh, were doing, you did Magic in high school. Yeah. Like you, uh, you used to do all kinds of stuff. Could you, could you explain what you did back then? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was really taking every opportunity that I could to perform. We had a really nice theater in the school and we had a lot of kids. So any opportunity I could during breaks, I was just making announcements that I do a performance in the theater during lunch and whoever showed up, showed up. And then when I couldn't do that, I mean, I was doing the escape stuff. Like I did a hundred foot rope escape in the hallway and was just kind of performing every opportunity I could. Um, yeah, took okay. some guts back then, I think. Okay, for for our young uh, escape artists, do you have any any uh, tips or anything for that? Yeah, I mean, I definitely say take challenges, uh, take the opportunity to be different and do the unique thing, but be safe. Like, no amount of applause is worth your life or worth danger. And the audience doesn't know the difference between real danger and stage danger. So if you can make it appear it without it being there, then that's probably the better option. That is solid advice. <laughs> okay. Um, this is... I'll, I'll get to you, Dylan. No, you're good. You're good. But, uh, so I like to go off from your, from your audition of... of um, Can I tell you? Mm -hmm. well, the okay, so... Your concept of sleight of hand. How did you come up with that concept and why? Uh, like the or message. How pen, how pen called it sleight of hand. I have no clue. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm not exactly sure either. Um, in that little deliberation moment, I definitely think there's a lot of acts that kind of get it right away. I was super just in the moment of what was going on, that they gave that whole spiel that you see now on TV. That's the same thing that they had said to me, but I just went. I have no idea. And we had a conversation that was a little bit more broken down of what had gone on during the act because I was really just not certain. Um, so a lot of the code that is seen on TV doesn't come across to me as like, I know what it means. I don't. I'm still over my head, but we had like a face to face conversation that was cut out. There wasn't an audience. So there was an interaction there where they're like, this is straight up. I'm like, this is straight up. Cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you giving it to me for real because, yeah. Because, I mean, they don't want to tell the audience how it's actually done. I mean, yeah. They are the bad boys of magic, but that not, not that bad. <laughs> yeah, not to others, but maybe to them. But, yeah, the, the the fact that there wasn't an audience allowed us to have that, which I think they couldn't before, but because of reg COVID regulations at the time, they were able to just have a person-to-person -person instead of muggle-to-muggle -muggle conversation. <laughs> Do you think you'll um, go on for us again? Uh, yeah, I've definitely thought about it. I, I know they're doing a new season, so I, I wouldn't turn the opportunity down, but uh, if it works out. Dang it. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. I was thinking of going on, but, you know, possibly, I have no clue. It's always worth applying. We never know how many seasons there's going to be. I mean, 10 is a lot, which is what they're approaching. So who knows when it's going to end. And it's it's one of the last really good magic programs out there. They do it really, really well. So if you want to apply or send in a video, just just do it. And you'll go from there because 
uh, you can always work on something with them if, if they like you and want to change what's going on. Yeah, because I followed their Instagram and they made a post about like sending auditions and stuff. And then they made a post yeah. recently like, no more card magic, too many card auditions. And so uh, that's my opportunity yeah. missed. But um, <laughs> uh, Well, realistically, like you can do card stuff differently. Like I did flashcards, which I realistically did a, a card trick that just looked different so you could take what you do and the skills you have and just yeah make and it just apply it to a different like object a card trick yeah but, but i guess yeah one cool. day one day i might go on full us we'll think we'll see there's not a lot of one days left this could be the last season <laughs> that's true okay so off off from your full snap i know you're part of the uh magic council juniors right Junior yeah program as both Dylan and i are so how long have you been in the castle for and uh why did you join um, I think I've only been a member for about a year or so. I was in and around the castle performing at the time, and I think I ended up just being. Pardon, sorry. How old were you when you joined? Uh, I believe I was yeah eighteen. I'm nineteen now, so eighteen when I joined the program. So I was working a week then, and it happened to be like a meeting day on the week I was there and I came in to just see what was going on with the meeting. Um, I'm sure like you guys, I heard a lot about it when I was a young, still a young person in magic, like it was kind of the place to be. And so in coming in and experience what the meeting was like and seeing how everyone interacted, it was just something I wanted to be a part of. So worked on it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, the castle part. So do you think, do you do anything outside of uh, the castle? Yeah, I mean, I re haven't been to the castle in a while because I'm Vancouver based. So I do a lot of shows that are out, I guess, in the Can Canada region. And then a few of the other magic venues that work like Castle, Chicago, Nashville, House of Cards, all those kind of places. Kids stay hydrated. <laughs> No, 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 that's, <laughs> no, it's been good. I just want to um, quickly add, I know this is a magic podcast, but we also like to get to know, uh, let the viewers know a bit more about our guests. So you have an interest with motocross, am I right? Yeah, you're right. So can you very, tell us a bit about very that? Very well prepared, Dylan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Did my research, did my 10 second Instagram bio research, but, um, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, so and talk about maybe how it ties in with magic and which, yeah, just about that, motocross. Yeah, um, like I grew up with a passion for motorsports, I'd say like cars and bikes. My dad was a race car driver, so I kind of grew up in the guise of looking up to him and wanting to be some part of that world. Um, and then when COVID happened and I really couldn't perform, I ended up working at a motorsports dealership, which is probably where I really, really fell into the passion. And it's just different. Um, I haven't found a lot of crossover between motorsports and magic other than like the risk taking and probably um but it, it's a break it's a nice different kind of element and i i really liked having more than one passion like uh how about you guys do you have any other passion other than magic that kind of takes up your life a lot well uh yeah tommy yeah tommy. but mostly it's magic for me that's my that's my road i'm going down yeah sorry going up going up doesn't mean why go down and go. Uh, yeah, football, football and video editing for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do, yeah, I, I do like video editing, like playing around. That's why I'm, because I, I like doing the podcast, because I like playing around with all the YouTube videos, things, and editing, everything, all that. But uh, yeah, football as well is um, a huge passion for me. But it doesn't really, I feel like I spend the most time on Magic. Like sometimes yeah, a bit too yeah. much time. Uh, Eric, yeah. But yeah, what were you going to say? I just got finished <laughs> doing that itself. Because <laughs> I've only been doing it for two uh, years, but um, it's been probably the longest two years of my life. In a good way? Yeah. So, uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this might take a minute to uh, ask this question. All right. No. So your style of magic, your, your preference of magic, what magic is, and like, uh, and you're, you stop of uh, performing that magic, of uh, uh, putting it out there. So let's start off like uh, your style of magic, what is that style? 
Um, I would probably say it's like comedic storytelling because as a person, I find myself to be quite sardonic or sarcastic. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's see from, from that one. I'm saying, what was the second thing? Dylan? Yeah, how how did you get into like escape? Because that, that's your like main thing. Eh? Um, um, it's a part. I wouldn't say main, but it's a big element. Because I don't know many, too many magicians who are, um, especially like young magicians who are in the like level of escape you are. Oh, Eric, yeah. Eric's been working on some things with escape. Oh, uh, they show me too, which is pretty cool. Come on, Eric. No, that's cool. <laughs> don't be shy now. That's really cool. Yeah, well, it is for YouTube, so why not? Yeah, no, it's, I, I mean, it's, hey, I can't wait to see it. Um, I'd say now the best thing about it is that I have the ability to be different. Like, it's just a lot of different things oh, where true. I can do close yeah. up and stage and escapes and I try everything. Um, I don't think I could ever be just an escape artist, uh, but in regards to how it happened, there was an organization um, that it was a nonprofit that raised like awareness and food and funds for children in developing countries that oh. had malnutrition. And they had approached me um, and the school saying, hey, we know she does magic. Like, can you come up with a routine or something to tell the story or to raise awareness? It's going to get a lot of publicity. We want a kid to do it. Um, and I, I was researching escapes in Houdini at the time. And some part of my like 14, 15 year old brain went like, I'm going to do that. Um, so it was really just, I think, situation that had lined up and like where I was in my career of magic and where the school was and what they were looking for. And it just, it was a, it was a big jump to go from doing close up, hanging upside down. And I definitely was super lost at the beginning like i was hanging upside down on monkey bars hoping one day to figure out how to do it and it just it, yeah it took a lot of time but i feel like well a lot when a lot of magicians approach magic they find like stage and escape like expensive because like when i first got to magic you know, i want to cut women in half and put heads together and take chicken heads off and you know all that like stuff mm -hmm. and making statue liberties vanish all that is right. so what is your main like type of except if you know what I mean like do you because like straight jackets or like that's just something I'm interested about like budget wise first gates? yeah um how yeah, it works for you budget wise like, I do yeah is uh, the upside down straight jacket or like a comedic like a, a Keller or a chain cuff like in and out kind of routine which is probably the less expensive version of the stuff oh okay okay just I, I want to kind of take this a different uh, uh kind of a different route of this question so what was your lowest part in magic like what and then how did you get back up for our, for our young magicians out there that's a great question of, um, of you, hard question you? probably um i would say probably like a lot of us during covid when you weren't performing and you didn't have that time on stage i think it, it's when you were when I was used to being performing I was I, when I was yeah I was used to performing I was used to having that audience admiration of the feeling of doing magic for someone and knowing that it could change lives or change someone's day or change someone's afternoon like having that impact on people and no longer being able to do that I think I I forgot how much I loved it when I wasn't able to do it so I think even out of COVID it definitely took me a long time to be able to perform again. Like from COVID to Fool Us, I did nothing in between. Like Fool Us was my first time since COVID performing because I just kind of forgot that I loved doing it. And Fool Us was like a jump start to that. Have you ever considered of doing like uh, a meagle? Like to practice with people? Like, yeah. Because you know, I, I, I think I've I've... got off of it. No, hey, I think I saw Dylan, you were doing some of that. Yeah. Oh, yesterday. I was, yeah, I was so yeah. bored. I'm like, I yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. hey, that's a, a, a weird but useful platform. Um, definitely, um, I think in high school, a couple of my friends went on and I probably did magic back then. Yeah, um, it is a very... But, um, you, you know? Yeah. No, com no comment. Gonna get. Yeah, no comment added. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Smart. Off of what my question was, though, know, about the evil, would you consider it like... Um, of promoting like a a a web based of some sort of like 
kind of magicians performing for like outside, you know, because you know how Castle has their meetings. Mm-hmm. They're like, they have their like inside, you have to be part of the castle or know it and then right. We yeah. Came from like something like outside of that. For young performers? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that there needs to be more kind of like resource for that. I run like a Teen Tuesday thing for the IBM, which is like once a month or twice a month, which is just like an online thing similar to like our uh, for magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I know one of their members. Uh, yeah, the Brotherhood of Magic and International yeah. Brotherhood of Magic has to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's a good platform, I think. I do think that there should be more kind of resources for us to do that. And I mean, this is great having a podcast that you guys are doing. It's good to see young people doing it. Um, but stuff like YouTube and Instagram and social media would probably be great being able to have a platform for, you know, juniors and young performers all over the world to be able to perform and promote their stuff is something that needs to be created. And I definitely stand behind that. Okay, now I know I'm jumping all over the place, but back to our fullest. So we're okay. going to do that. So I know this is a weird question for you. Why the multiplication cards? Because <laughs> you, could, you could have done a whole nother trick too. You could have done a card tricker of some sort. You could have done uh, tarot cards. Not yeah. tarot, but you could have done, uh, you could have done the uh, mind in cards of like the stars and all kinds of stuff why why the multiple location cards and why put them up to it um yeah a, a lot of the idea for the effect had stemmed from so sean parker like i mentioned he's my mentor now and we were creating the ru- routine at the same time um and he had kind of come up with the idea of what it was going to look like and he suggested multiplication cards to kind of endorse like the banter between Penn and i being able to tug on him a little bit and do the don't be an Stop idiot on television well. kind of thing <laughs> prefer our audience members tell her in the show does not talk but in real life he talks yes it's not to me though it's okay hey one day you gotta go on the show though exactly you have to you have to well uh dylan uh would you like to say something about i kind of setting up your time oh no you're good um yeah funny gig story i get oh okay um (laughs) Put you on the spot like that. Yes. I'm not sure it's funny. I, uh, <laughs> All good. I've Just had any... like a string of like every time I've done a show on New Year's Eve, I say like every time something's gone wrong. I think the first time I ever did a show on New Year's, I was like 14 or 15, and it was some like family house party, and I had a volunteer that came up and helped me. Then he sat back down, I went off stage, and then like two minutes later, he stood up, grabbed his chest, and fell over and oh. had a heart attack. So I wouldn't say that's a funny story. Definitely not. But it was just like the start of these strings of just like Dang. super obscure events that happened. Um, Did you witness that? So that was experience. Yeah. Then I uh, then I boycotted performing on New Year's until this year. I was doing the upside out straight jacket in like a, a super nice like thousand th- theater that I was so excited like okay I got to do so well and I was doing the upside down straight jacket. And um, um, my pants had come undone, like the zipper had broke while I was upside down doing the escape. Oh, no. And I had to make a very quick career decision if I was going to get out of the jacket first or fix that first. Um, what did but, you do? Uh, yeah, what would you do? Tell I us. I got out of the jacket first. Career first, you know? There was music cues. You had to, right? Play it off later. Just De- close dedication. the really fast, please. Okay, well... That's hilarious. <laughs> That's what the content now, we need. That's the content we need. Comedy. I'm a cartoon comedy at heart. But um, for comedy magic, because I know I'm, I'm a huge comedy, I'm a comedic uh, person. Mm-hmm. So, so if you have that advice for me about comedic being you know, comedy, why? What is, what is your best advice? Um, yeah, I think a lot of it's about natural moments, being able to be off script and or comfortable enough in your performance to be able to have those moments as they come. So the ways to practice that. Script, so it's kind of, I'm just going yeah. Off. yeah, no, that's good. So I'd say either like improv is great, doing stand up I think is great, but I think for me, the most value that I have in my comedy is pretty much all crowd work. Like it comes from moments that happen as I'm performing and then moments I recreate from previous performances. 
So just being able to listen to your audience and try and figure out if they're the kinds of people that would laugh at these lines or at different lines or how far you can take a joke, um, which really just comes from doing 100 shows or doing 100 improv classes or stand up. So try all of it, I would say, though, try every single chance you can to perform and practice being in the moment. It's a lot of talking. No, that's what we need. <laughs> that's exactly what we need. I almost teared up. It was emotional. I won't be able to my lighting. But, um, so you were in our auditions. And, well, first off, I had no clue until I really looked at the at the names at the end. I was like, oh, my goodness. I did not just do that for Gabrielle and Lester. Oh. But I was, I was like, oh, Lord. Did I? How did I do? What you did? were wonderful. Thank you. You wouldn't have gotten in if you didn't yeah, kick but... ass. And also, you're only like one of two people in the whole world that know who I am, so I'll bonus points for that. <laughs> I think I, um, I think I first heard of you from Griffin. I was live streaming with Griffin, and then mm. he was talking about you. Because I was asking I him about like a trick he was performing, and then he mentioned you, yeah. like, doing with you or something. And then, yeah. <laughs> No, Griffin's great. Television, and I fell in love. That's all I have to say. <laughs> awesome magician stuff. Finally, a female young magician. Let's go. Those kids are going far. It's good. Sadly. <laughs> no more, no more old magician guys. Be like, okay, you guys, watch the call. Hey, they still exist. We need them. Some of them, you know, there's, I mean, Doug Khan, we, we had an interview with him. He's, he's kind of like the grandfather of, uh, of magic, you know. Did you say that to him? He does a good amount yeah. of uh, diving. Oh, we said heaps of stuff to him about that. <laughs> that's good. No, that's good. Yeah. yeah. A few tears on that episode. But... Okay. <laughs> I think, Dylan, do you think that's, that's good enough? Podcast, you know? So we got another 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> so I was going to say, have you ever been street performing? And if so, yeah. what tricks have you performed and why? And what's your strongest material in your opinion? Performers, by the way. <laughs> yep. yeah. on, the, on the street scene? Yes. For material for street? Um, I did a lot of card stuff when I was street performing. Yeah. Like more of like impromptu going up to people or filming or doing that kind of stuff. Um, and then even when I built crowds, it was kind of just from doing that walk up to people, like never kind of do a full street show. Um, I've done the chain cuff on the street once, oh, wow. like that's a quick release kind of surrounded one. Um, but for the most part, straight jacket card stuff. <laughs> straight jacket on the street. Hey, you know. Um, oh yeah. I definitely want to do more street performing. I think I think it's scary to get out there and wait for a crowd to come and see you when you're used to like. Honestly, I'd, I'd say, you know, when you have that, I guess, I wouldn't know if you call it an ego, but that thought in your head that you're used to walking out on a stage and having an audience there. Whereas when you walk out on the street, you're like, okay, people, I hope you like me kind of thing. So <laughs> I want to get more into it definitely as a challenge and to get out of my comfort zone a bit because I, I think it would make me a better performer. Yeah, because I know I, 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 mean, I street perform. <laughs> my magic is street I want to go because... Uh, Adam Wiley said that it's not street magic, but I do street magic. <laughs> I was doing street magic for my audition, you know. But uh, how long have you been doing that for? I just started like a uh, New Year's. Hey, it's more uh, than me. I I, I, uh, I got inspired by this guy named Jason Marr, which mm -hmm. like, you better get us an interview. <laughs> so baby, <laughs> he, he's been asked a bunch of ways how to get uh, people to come uh, on the podcast. Yeah, but, you gotta get him on the show. What I, I um I do a bunch of you know whatever I can I can come up with. I don't have a I don't have a specific tricks I go to. It's my it's, it's either it's either cups and balls. So I might start with the cups and balls just to pull people in. I might do chop I do chop cups a lot of times. I actually carry a magic bag everywhere I go. Nice. Good. After the podcast, I can show you. Yeah. That's but, great. Um, but I, I started doing it because I needed to put more magic out there because I, I stopped doing some magic stuff. And I, you know, I was going absolutely nowhere. Yeah. So I went to the castle and now I'm going somewhere again. 
Hey, you're on the right track. Forward is a direction. Exactly. You guys got right back to me. I was working the day you guys back and got back to me. So it was day two. Second of April. That's awesome. Tell my friends, no, it wasn't a joke for me getting into the castle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dylan, have you done much street performing? So I've um not busking really, because um Eric I, Eric yeah, does more like busk, so like see the table people come i normally i do walk around really so like yeah know, walk around's more of i want to get into um busking for like fun i thought like learning cups and balls and all that the classics because mm -hmm. classics are classics for a reason but um so yeah i want to get more into it it's definitely something but i mainly yeah i want to get more into gigs and performing more that's my goal yeah. but that's have you done like are you saying corporates or restaurant gigs or or, or what are you, you what's the dream what are you chasing right so now? i table hopping is something i didn't realize you can make quite a bit of money from i thought you'd make like ten dollars an hour but it's a lot more than that surprisingly because parents yeah. really love young children doing magic while they're eating yeah. oh while they're waiting for their food so it's yeah. really good good I tips yeah that's great i work as an in-house magician at a restaurant. Yeah, it's cool. It's like, yeah. I make twenty five dollars an hour plus I get tips. It's, it's it's good. Great. Yeah, you can make a lot from it and yeah. Well I was gonna say restaurant. Oh uh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh well so I like to ask magicians this. What is your opinion yeah. on YouTube tutorials or magic tutorials on social media just for views? If you know much about the subject yeah no definitely i i would say in the just for views regards like the people that are putting stuff out there just for you know the monetization or the views or the clicks i'm definitely against but i can't say i haven't engaged in it like i definitely think when i was a younger performer looking up magic and wasn't always reading a book as much as i love them i was looking up you know stuff to do as i was walking out of the house to go to a restaurant to perform or to go out to perform for friends i was looking like i think we've all done it um but I'm definitely not a supporter of it. I think there's a way to teach magic, even online, yes. um, while still keeping the passion and the importance of it alive. And there's platforms to do that that aren't public. So I think if you want to share, do it on a platform that's solely for magicians rather than the general public. Like it really crushes me because there are like magicians who just take gimmicks or like pay to fix. And they're not even magicians, they're just people trying to get views and then just straight up have like a cringy soundtrack in the back and then just reveal like five tricks in like 10, 20 seconds. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. Kids, what he's saying is this. If the last name is magic and it starts with the Sean, <clears throat> Sean is magic. <laughs> Whatever you do, see, here's the thing. They have gimmicks, right? A lot of their tricks with gimmicks. Sean is magic does a couple of tricks, though, right? But if your whole trick is just based off a of gimmick, right and you have the person behind you with the gimmick what are you doing what do you they can see what you're doing you got, yeah. the, you got the dumb the dumb gimmick right turns to the rapper they can see that <laughs> mm -hmm. we got we got like a couple of seconds to left so uh i'd like to wrap it up with this okay we got a little jingle are, are you ready Okay. Are you guys ready? Okay. I'm ready. I have no idea what's I have no idea what's happening. Okay. We are the magician queen. Yes, we are. Come on. Oh my gosh. And we just interviewed Gabriella Lesser. Can't believe it, Dylan. How could you do this? The number one piece of advice I got was never talk to an American, and I see why. <laughs> that was meant to be a duet, Dylan. What's going on? <laughs> Sorry, I know we should have we should have rehearsed this, um, Eric. You didn't come to rehearsals. I tried calling you. <laughs> oh. I reckon we should start doing it though. We should start doing it. You know what? I'll come back in the future when you're prepared a bit more, Dylan. Okay, you you let me know. Come on, Dylan. How could you do that? Well, we probably honestly will need you in the future. 
because we are quite Thailand guests. I'm mean, like finding them. So yeah, if you can come next time, that'll be great. Um, whenever we. Yeah, of course. Is there it. anyone else on your list? Um, I know the street performer. Anyone else that you're wanting that you're having trouble getting or haven't asked yet? Or um, so so far all the people have wanted we've asked. What were you gonna say, Eric? Yes, Eric, hands up. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, so there's a, yeah, there, we have, we um did a call and we kind of talked about who he wanted. And we're going to get a lot of, Eric's been talking to some of the people at the Magic Castle um, to jump on, which is really good. I went to Steven, uh, talking to Phil, talking to uh, Pete. Um, I want, you know who I really want to get? Who's impossible to find? Who's that? That, uh, but, um, I know, it's a good joke. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, <laughs> damn, Johnny Ace Palmer. Where is that man? Because I knew, I know, I know he, he, um, he was in the castle, uh, a couple of, uh, about a month ago or so. Mm -hmm. Plus, also another guy, and who was, I think, at the castle for, like, the last meeting, which they said he disappeared? No, Lawson? No. no. Sorry, uh, sorry, I had to add. <laughs> sorry. Was, no, um, rest in peace. I'm sorry. Michael I should have said that. Michael Amar. I would love to interview him. Who's sorry? Michael Amar. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't think of that. I think they probably both do it, and they have a lot of connections at the castle, so I can imagine you can ask. Congrats. Okay, so we are about out of time. But thank you so much, uh, Gabrielle, for joining on such short notice. Uh, we're going to link her. If you have made it to the end of this video, DM me on Instagram and I'll send you a special prize. DM either Behind the Magic or myself, the Trick Kid. Because unfortunately, the audio got cut off. This doesn't normally happen. It's never happened before. But I've got a special surprise for everyone. Next week, we've got a whole new setup. We've got some paid software we're going to be using to um, record the podcast. The audio is going to be 100 times better. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. Share this with your friends. But, yeah, if you do stay to the end of this without just rewinding it to the end, DM me, I'll send you something.